And welcome, folks, to another edition of Steady Dropping Dimes. I know I said last week we were going to get back started on Wednesdays, but listen, it's a we are we are a work in progress for our regularly scheduled time, right? We we sort of stumbled upon the viewership numbers being great Wednesdays at six o'clock, so we had already scheduled things in it weeks and months in advance to be doing, and so when we shifted to Wednesdays at six o'clock, it kind of threw some things for a loop. So I try to get to next week. Wednesday at six o'clock. This be the last week where we do Thursday at around six. But a lot to tackle on this great show with my guys. We dropped the episode of of my Ann Arbor, and they like, man, it was good to see Devin trying to shop like Sam. Man, that was good. To see. <laughs> so that it was. So is, I mean, it was. It's on the tape. It's on the show. That's because the that's the propaganda you continue to push. You know what I mean? I don't know what your problem is, but it's all right. All right. And my man, Daniel Horton. So before we get started with the whole episode with Steady Dropping Dimes, a hearty congratulations are due to the Horton family. Because the Horton family is now going to be two generations deep, two generations strong at the University of Michigan. So let's wrap it up for the Horton family, man. Congratulations. How does it feel? Daddy Horton. Yeah, man, I, to be honest, it's something I've always wanted. You know, since she was little, I've met, I was messing with her. You're going to be a Wolverine when they heard my son, right? And so for her to go through the process and work hard enough to achieve what she's achieved and gain acceptance into the University of Michigan, man, we couldn't be prouder. So I know we, we celebrated last weekend, but the celebrations aren't over. <laughs> that's how it's ongoing. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Sir. So, folks, uh, if you have been with us for a while, you know how we do. You know what this show is about. This is about me getting with with guys who i watch grow up go from boys to men not just players but outstanding and well you know guys father and daniel's uh case professionals analysts not just players who get up and talk because they play they can actually offer some analysis some thoughtful analysis and i thought man we could make a show out of that right and that's exactly what we've done here Steady dropping dimes, giving you real breakdowns, real thoughts, real opinions, nothing contrived. You get exactly what we think, just the PG version of it here on Steady Dropping Dimes because we are brought to you by our friends at Destination Ann Arbor, the tour guides to all things Washtenaw County. So if you're coming coming to town, Ann Arbor, Ipsy, Chelsea, Dexter, you're coming to any place in the area, Destination Ann Arbor is your tour guide places to go places to eat places to stay events coming to town go to annarbor.org that's annarbor.org or we'll give you a qr code that you can scan a little bit later on in the show that's very easy to do from your phone just lock it in and you'll know all the things that are coming to town there is a by the way i actually learned that there is a uh there's gonna be a jazz fest this summer and they were like hey maybe we could take the steady dropping dimes crew to the jazz fest Right here in MC on Ford Lake, over that man, it's I'm telling you, if you've never golfed over there at Eagle Crest, you don't realize what a gym it is. But man, it's yeah, I mean, it, it's a picturesque scene. So we got a lot of exciting things to come. We'll give you another glimpse of the Miami Arbor shoot when we get to that segment of the show. But right now, first of all, fellas, DG, how you doing? You doing all right? I'm doing great now. And Daniel, did you hear how uh, when he was giving us our credit, you can hear the tone of his voice. You you knew no garbage was coming. Right. That was him. Not not about to attack anybody else. So I, I, I love it. That's why I ain't stop you. I said, I, I know ain't no garbage coming up this tone. I know that tone. That's a, tone. My, my young That's a brother civilized is, tone. My young brother is so sensitive right now. So uh, it ain't me. Right it ain't me. I just don't. You know, I hear people be catching strays. I mean, you know what I mean? He's trying to make sure I don't get one of them. He, he, he can see you coming, Sam. When you, I when see you coming up, all the way. Up the BS. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You know, I got to give it. I got to give it to him when I can. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Got a chance to go to practice yesterday. Took the young go-getters, right? Had a nice made a day of it. You know, they got out of school for a little field trip. Played some video games. Some old school. Some Tekken. You know what I mean? Some, okay. some Mortal Kombat 3. You know, I had to get down on the show on real game, and you situate your turn. It ain't no he on he in in North Dakota. You playing like over the internet? Nah, sit and wait your turn. And if it if it freeze, we just got to reset it. Got to reset. It. I mean, hold it. That's right? real gaming, right? See, so real gaming was when you play and it freeze, and then you take the disc out, and then you got to blow on it. Yeah. Got to blow on it, then put it back in. Sometimes. <laughs> 
you gotta bang it on the on the little ridge there. Yeah, make yeah. sure it fit in there tight. Yeah. That was the old school. Oh, you might have to put it in the freezer and play another game for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, we got a lot to break down. Uh, starting off first, because we'll work in the spring practice and your spring practice observations, DG. But we got to start off with, with basketball. Dusty May is making some. So we hired Mike Boynton. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that he'd be high, hiring Akeem uh, Miskadine from from Georgia, assistant there who got him, John L. Davis at FAU, by the way. Mm-hmm. And if you're talking about hey, getting somebody out of the portal, man, if Michigan gets John L. Davis, you falling up the stairs, mm-hmm. right? You falling up the stairs. But let, we'll work our way into that. We got to start off with the athletic article on Juwan Howard, a one-on-one exclusive that he gave Brendan Quinn, and Brendan did a really good job. So shout out, shout out to him for uh getting Juwan sort of it's kind of like the exit interview right uh and I thought you got some really candid uh comments from Juwan I think you got a glimpse into what he really thought the problem was I think you got a glimpse into why Ward was like I didn't quite hear enough I think you you figured that out too but the 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 biggest takeaway for me was the whole Sanderson incident because we talked about that on that on this show and if you go back to that episode, you'll remember me saying what I heard was that there was a there was a something happened in practice with a player at the time. I, you know, didn't say it was Jace, but it wound up being Jace. And Juwan said, I got it. And then Sandman came in and it, it, he didn't stop when Juwan said, I got it. That is the version that Juwan told, which was different from the HR report. That that was the 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 complaint from Sanderson that was leaked by someone gave a totally different depiction of events. Even if you believe that the truth is somewhere in the middle, what we can settle on is that there was an independent investigation by HR, not by the basketball sport administrator or by board or anybody. This was the HR department coming in. Getting both sides, so getting Jawan's side, getting Sanderson's side, but here's the key. Getting the the accounts of all of the other people who were at practice that day. So the coaches, the player, whoever, I don't know how many, I don't know if they talked to the whole team or what, but you're getting the the takes from the other people that were there and seemed like a pretty clear assessment was made about where the truth lied, Daniel Horton. Yeah, it's like you said, we spoke about this when it, when it occurred, and we we kind of had ideas basically from, you know, like you've heard things, I've heard things as well, and our accounts that we heard were pretty similar, that, you know, the incident occurred, the head coach asked asked the strength and conditioning coach to ask Sanderson to, a Sanderson address it, he asked him to stop, he got it, he kept going, and, you know, the confrontation ensued, so it was one of those things where, like, we we kind of had a good idea of what happened, but now reading it, reading it from the from both sides, right? Because someone the HR report was leaked, or whoever gave Sanderson's account to the media first. Now here in Juwan's side, you're able to kind of piece things and patch things together and see, like, okay, there was a, some some insubordination in the situation, and there was, you know, a, a lack of respect for the the positions and the titles in the situation, right? As the strict and conditioning coach, when the head coach says, "Hey," That's it. I got it. That should be it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I say, any other organization, when the head coach says that, everybody commands immediate respect. Everything stops, right? It's like as a kid, when your, your dad comes to the room, hey, hey, everybody freezes, right? Like, hey, it's over with. And the same thing here. Like, hey, man, when, when, the, when the guy in charge says, that's it, that's it. Yeah. DG? No, I, I completely agree, man. It's because, like you said, Whatever you want to believe, the one thing that we can all for certain say that Sanderson was wrong. It, like it, it, in no area, unless maybe you have that relationship with your boss, maybe I guess, but not for real. When it's when it's serious, when the tone of voice has been settled, and it's like, hey, that's enough. In business, principal, you know, teacher subordinates, right? Coaches, if Harbaugh say something, ain't nobody on that staff going going you know, speak up after you say, hey, that's enough, right? I got it handled, right? It, it's almost kind of, hey, when the coach is speaking, everybody should be quiet. And, and I and one of my favorite movies is Lean On Me, right? 
And when Joe Clark say nobody moves during the playing of the song, <laughs> nobody moves. I don't care what you were doing. And then you talking out saying, I said, don't move. You child picking up track. I didn't ask you that. Right. And it seems very, oh, well, he a man. No, it's a subordinate position. Right. The, the He's the boss. He's the boss. Like if war comes in and, and says, hey, that's enough to Juwan. Juwan, hands off. Yeah. Got to say, got to stop. Right. And so I, it's, it's confusing as if it's like people don't understand that. Like in every walk of your life, everybody has a boss. Right. Everybody has a boss. And, t- and when you don't have a boss, then you get to say whatever you want when you want. But yeah. but you, that, that's not the position where Sanderson was in. And so and then the leak stuff, you know, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. Right. You leak it because if if yours was leaked, that means Jawan's would have been leaked because he had given one, too. Yeah. And it wasn't. Right. And so you're trying to get out ahead to make yourself look a little better, because when you in hindsight, when you get away from the situation, you know, ah, it's going to be hard for me to be right in this instance. Right. I was it, I was the one to kind of escalate the situation and everybody saw me charge after if that's true. Right. It seems like it was because when Juwan is absolved of all, you know what I mean? Right. Wrongdoing seems like the charge at him and Juwan had just come off surgery, incision in the chest. I don't think he's charging anybody or else he's just not a smart man. Right. And so you 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 get that part of it. And it's just like, all right, let me hurry up and get out ahead of this and make sure everybody ha- gets the sympathy card for me, because the first impression is hard to let go. Right. No matter what happens after clear it or not, if you if you have something on the Internet that says Devin did this or Sam did this, no matter what happens afterwards, it's always that first impression of, yeah, that was the uh, that's the side I'm on. And it's like some confirmation bias where people wanted it to be like that. Right. And so they're going to stick with that, even though. Uh, it looks like it's been proven otherwise. Yeah, I think there are there are a couple of things at play. They they've been losing. So you talk about confirmation bias. People were ready to be done with Jawan, and that colors the opinions of what happened. Then he's had uh, he's had blow ups. He had to blow up with Turgeon, and then of course the thing with Kravenhoff at the at the Wisconsin game. So that that predisposes people to believe in that he would have absolutely been the aggressor here. But as I said at the time. From not from Juwan, but from other people who were there, a there was no. It's like, oh man, it was no fight, it was no punch. That was the initial thing, and then what I was told was he said I got it, and Sandman didn't stop when he said I got it, and then things escalated from from there. Now, like I said, and like you just reiterated, whether you whether you still believe that he, a I think yeah, he probably was here. The HR report to me is the definitive word here. That of of where the where the wrong lies or how wrong someone was. Clearly, Juwan admitted in an article. So hey, I kind of said some after it escalated, I said some things I shouldn't have said. You know, I used some some terminology I should have used. But I'm right? with you though. But I'm with yeah. you. Yeah, so he, he said, yeah. obviously my normal words aren't working for you. <laughs> 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 obviously, my civilized words. Right aren't working right. for you. Here's right. some new vocab to maybe get this right. thing going. So, but I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give normal you normal amongst men in the locker room. Yeah. Yeah. Normal. See, now I'm going to give you the other side. I'm going to give you the other side because the person, one of the people, because I talked to a couple of people about it, one who told me, hey, he said, I got it, and it kept going. Another who was there was like, oh, man, this is being, this is, this is being taken somewhere that, that it shouldn't have been taken. And yeah, you know, Sandman should have backed down, but the, the person said Sandman wasn't wrong with what he said. Right, right, right. That he wasn't wrong with what he said. And so it's like, okay, that may you may have a valid point. And I made this point back in the time. Yep. Your point might be right, but your delivery or where you deliver it, that the matters. How you deliver it, yes. Yeah, that 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 matters. So, uh, let's, a, do in, let's do it in an athlete like perspective. This. When I'm an athlete, Daniel athlete. And something happens on the field, you can't go back and forth. And this is in practice. You can't go back and forth with your coach about you what you did and didn't do. You have to wait to the film, brother. This ain't that you can't do this right now. This ain't the time. You got another time to play. So if we expect uh athletes, right, young adults to understand that, the coaches in the in the in the, you gotta understand this is not the time. We'll talk about this later, but I've already said it's over. Let's be done with it. We'll talk about it later. Right. If I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, whatever the case may be. But you don't get into an all-out argument with a coach as a as a player when you're on the on the field. If you might be right, I've been right a bunch of times. I'm just telling you. <laughs> me and yeah. Coach Rod Smith or me and Doug Nussmeyer, 
we are not getting into it. Me and yeah. Borges, I might have to get down on Borges because you know me and Borges. <laughs> but I'm wrong if I do that. I'm wrong, right? Yeah. And so it, it's not a back and forth at that moment. And, and for Michigan now, you got the big jumbo trying at practice to see yeah. the play right after it happens. So there is no discrepancy. But before we didn't have that, and so we got to wait till we watch the film. And yeah. if we watch the film, I might have been right, and the coach will acknowledge it. Or usually the players usually wrong a lot of times, you know. Yeah, and so so as we got, you know, Mark Dyson, he said wasn't wrong and continue to ride. Jason, no, 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 that's not what I'm getting at. What the person said, he wasn't wrong in talking about, hey, the 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 entitlement issue or the accountability. The thing that he said. Yeah, the thing that he said, not in continuing to ride, Jace, but in the thing that he said about some things being wrong. And there were some, there yeah. were some things right now. I think that's what in the sit down in the one on one with Ward. I think that's the kind of thing that he was looking for. When let's talk about the the issues with with the team, the issues with the program. It can't just be nil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It can't just be that. It can't. It can't just be the heart issue, which I don't even think. Jawan was making that out to be the case, but it definitely was an emphasis on, in, on NIL. And I think, you know, I can't, not to speak for Ward, but I think he was probably looking at it like, okay, you know, we, yes, heart issue was an issue. Sure, uh, NIL, but what are we going to do to get past this admissions, these admissions hurdles that you have? Knowing that admission, I can't change the admissions policy when it comes to tra- uh, credit transfers. Yeah. Uh, that's not in my purview. So how are you going to, to adapt to that? What are we going to do about all these close games that we lost? What are we going to do about this, the, the roster configuration that we have? What are we going to do about having our, our best player be academically yeah. ineligible for a certain period of time? Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Sam. What are we going to do about the, the cultural issues that, the program that are keeping us, that are preventing us from being successful, right? Not necessarily like, or, like I think if you fix the culture issues, if you got guys showing up, if you got guys on time, got guys taking their school, their, their classwork and their school responsibility serious, those things on the court will, will, will sometimes will really fix themselves as well because you, now you have a more focused, more in tune, more in sync group. So now where we can be more, have more synergy, we can have more connective tissue in these moments to where we need to dig down deep and win close games. When you have a situation where these guys are, you know, the things that you hear about the, the program where, like say, your point guard is out for six games on the road because it's academically ineligible. That's crazy. Like, we, Devin, we know as athletes what type of lifestyle you live in if you're academically ineligible, right? That's crazy. You like, we, under, we as, as former players, we understand what – we understand you. You got to do a lot. You got to do a lot of nothing <laughs> to be active. Exactly. Uh, especially as a basketball player because, I mean, you ain't there that long, you know what I mean, before the basketball season. But – uh, guys, I, this is what I want to know, right? And so, obviously, Sanderson right on the the whole entitlement, all those different things, right? And the attention to detail and the discipline and mm-hmm. all that, right? And I just heard a uh, – I don't know if you guys saw Ben Herbert. Uh, obviously, he's at San Diego's now – I mean, not San Diego, L.A. Chargers now. And he gave a speech on, like, his philosophy and all those different things, right? And so, he talked about how disciplined the teams are in the fourth quarter and all that, and it's because of what he does in the weight room a yes. lot of times of, hey, we got a plate, you're going to put it there, all the rogue, the the, the rogue that the plate is going to line up, right? Just little details that they get because, to be frank, the players are with the strength staff way more than they're with the coaches. Way, And I don't know if it's the same for basketball. That's why I'm asking this question. Way more with, with, the, with the strength staff in football than you are with the coaches. And so a lot of that attention to detail, that ability to finish, you get that in the weight room with yeah. your strength coach. And then it gets transferred onto the field. So now the coaches can just do ball, right? We don't got to do all this other discipline. All, I mean, somewhat as far as the scheme, but it should carry over because you've been so disciplined and so uh, strategic in your in your diligence of having discipline in the weight room. So my question is, and, and this is maybe for Daniel, is that the same in basketball? Does Sanderson have to take some, some responsibility for the lack of discipline and whatever? Uh, I think – Maybe not the lack of discipline, but I think the things that come with the lack of discipline, if, you, if you're not able to fix them, then everybody has to share blame there, right? Mm. And I think for me, one of the reasons why they didn't, why they collapsed in the second half or didn't play as well in the second half was their condition. And it's been like that for two years now. That and, seems like a, a strength coach thing, right? Right. That, that's, a, that's partially a strength coach thing. But as they transition to more being with the basketball coach, that's also on the basketball coach to make sure he's maintaining conditioning levels 
on the court because they're not with the strength and conditioning coach as much. So when you see a lack of uh, chemistry between the head coach and the strength and conditioning coach, they're not on the same page personally or professionally. You can kind of see, understand why. Okay, we look at our guys; they're they're fading in the second half because the the entire stat, the entire is they're not to see whether they can come out and say, "Yeah, we were, we were." But when you look at the product on the floor, they're not in lockstep. Exactly. When you look, you, you can see it based on what we're watching. You can like you can see guys gassed at the beginning of the second half or midway through the second half. That's on everybody. That's not just on Sanderson or on Howard. That's on both of them for not being in sync when it comes to hey. Where are we at conditioning wise? Where are we at, you know? And like you said, Devin, better conditioning when when, when Herbert has this all world strength and conditioning program, guys are still strong mentally in the, in the fourth quarter. That comes with fatigue. As you fatigue, your mind gets weak. Mm-hmm. So it's, it all it all goes hand in hand, man. That's why you know they need to just hire me because y'all been seeing me work out. <laughs> I'll be getting to it. Hey, man, that 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 we are even talking about this, I think, is is evidence <laughs> of. The, the kind of if, if Sanderson was was indicting the culture, the fact that the episode even made it out is an indictment of the culture. And I made this point last week. If you think for a second that this national championship football staff where they were all but everybody on there was buddy, buddy. That Jim Harbaugh loved every one of the coaches equally. No, you are sadly mistaken. Exactly. Sadly, you are sadly mistaken. Right. But did you ever hear about disharmony? Did you ever hear about a coach being, you know, speaking out of turn to his boss? You never heard about that. Right. That don't mean it didn't happen. But you never heard about it. It didn't interrupt a a championship culture, culture on the field, culture in the staff, in the staff room. Right. That that's part of. You know, not to not if I'm not talking about hiding anything nefarious, hiding any wrongdoing, of course, but blow ups between coaches or blow ups between a coach and the player, unless it's a it's some kind of abuse, man, that stays in the that stays in the program. You don't just share family business, period. If that you gets know. out, yeah, man, that that to me said that they got some real some real problems. If the same day, this was like the same day it happened, and. The word that got out was all oh, Juwan that hit somebody. Like, who the hell? And I remember asking some of the people, they was like, man, what are you talking about? Ain't I mean it was a it was an argument in practice, but nobody got hit. That's what it that's what it turned into. It's a problem that it even made it out. And this gets back to what I said at, at the uh, at the onset. If you're sitting down in your war manual and you want to hear something that allows you to allow for another year. Because the heart, clearly the heart condition was way bigger, way bigger than at least the, the issue that it presented was way bigger yeah. than anyone suspected. And in retrospect, he said he came back too soon, mm-hmm. way too soon. If you're willing to grant him some grace there and say, I understand these were very trying circumstances. But if we put set that aside and talk about the issues that that were present even after you return. How are we going to fix that? And I, I think that's where you feel it because you, you do have your best player who has since transferred to, to Kansas State. And, and I want your thoughts on that, Daniel, because I think it's a great move for Doug. I think it's a terrific mm-hmm. move for Doug. Go to Kansas State. I think Jerome Tang is a coach that is going to be able to reach him. He has been very successful with a similar sized guard in Marquise Noel. I don't, I don't think he's as good as far as a floor general is concerned, but – He's, I thought, Doug's shot making ability improved this year. Maybe not necessarily his leadership ability. Marquise Noel was nice, man. Yeah, he was. He was. He was real nice. But this is the kind of guy. Everything you say about Jerome Tang speaks to me, Daniel. About you know what? That's a guy that's going to be able to reach Doug. But I don't think that it's the worst thing that he found another place as far as Dusty establishing the program and establishing leadership in this program moving forward because I think he I think you need a whole new leadership quotient yeah. in Michigan basketball and I think the best way to do that is to to go out and get your team and go and and bring in some some leadership into the into the equation curious what you think so a part of me just like most 
people in this country, right? Most people that follow sports love a redemption story. So I would love for Doug to stay and figure it out and display the talent and ability that we know he has that he showed in flashes and become a Michigan legend on Michigan, achieve great things at Michigan, but it wasn't able to work out. But I think with the things that we've we we've heard about Doug as as you know the issues he's had with academics and then watching him because of consistency on the floor at times. And a lot of that, I think, for me, having played the position is a lot based on, like, internal personality, right? And I think for him maturing as a person, as a player, Jerome Tang, he couldn't go play for pick a better coach. Like, he's going to go there because Coach Tang is going to provide a certain level of – not saying Jawan didn't provide him with leadership or anything like that, but just Coach Tang is different, right? He's everybody that – I'm pretty sure you spoke to people about him, Sam, I have as well. I know, I know guys that have worked for him. Just his approach to life in general is going to benefit Doug and going to help him personally. And I think, like I told you before, I think if he if Doug figures out the the things that he has to do from a personal perspective, it's having his business off the court. You'll see him take off on the court, right? Because he has the ability to be pretty yes. be a really good player. And I think outside of that, with Coach Chang's development of guards, as far from a basketball perspective. Is going to help Doug as well. Like we all know, Juwan is more of a big man coach. So, going I'm, just, I'm talking about more from the standpoint of listen. He is a fiery dude. Yeah, he's a fiery dude, and and I just think back to being at the game with you, and you were like, man, somebody tell that dude to stay in the moment. And I and me, let me give you your flowers. You were right. You've been in the arena. And you was like, Sam, you can't be doing. He can't be over there beating on his chest. With the thing, hey man. And my my issue at the time was. He hadn't been doing that the whole game. That that fire and brimstone that he brings, I just would have liked to have seen it from the start of the game. But the issue is, there, there, the, the time and place kind of uh, point that you were making. I think that applies more broadly. Yeah. Because I, I, I think you know you can't be fiery with your, with your coaches. You can't be the same thing we were talking about with with Jace. You, that's not that's a Doug thing too. Yeah. That's not just a Jace thing, right? So that's where I say, and that's where, you know, I think if if you're warden, you're doing the assessment, that's where you say, you know what, man, give give me a plan for how we're going to correct all of this because people didn't want to hear it at the time. It was the case. Jawan had a shot. He had an absolute shot at coming back. But I think making NIL be the overriding issue with the program just wasn't the that wasn't the commentary that was going to get that extra year. So now that doesn't mean NIL isn't a problem, right? Let's be clear. I think NIL was a bigger problem for basketball than football because you know it's it's easier to drum up the support for football number one because you know football is number one at the school. I mean we don't have to miss no miss any words about it. Uh, that's where a lot of the support lies. And then of course they had been winning. They had been a playoff team, right? Now they just won a national championship. So, of course, it's easier to, to garner support for that reason, too. But the other piece of NIL, and this is what this is what Jim started to get and got more and more as the process went, went along. This is what Sharon got coming in the door. And this is what Dusty got at his intro press conference. Hey, man, you got to be hustling your own NIL. You got to hunt that now. The school had his as and collectives. Collectives have come a great distance, and the the kind of support that the school has it offers collectives have has come a great distance. They they needed to to make some strides, and they have. But the coach is absolutely going to have to dedicate a lot of his time to hustling nil, and I guess I was. I was a little shocked by the number that Dusty put on it, but it, it speaks to the reality of the situation. The man said, I'm going to spend 25 to 30% of my time on NIL and donor engagement. If that don't tell you how big a deal it is for the coach to hustle it up, I don't know what does. So, yeah, you know, this his, his legitimate gripe, Michigan can't lose 100 Dickinson. Michigan's got to be able to get it Ray J. Dennis. 100% right. But the other piece of it is, move from henceforth and forevermore, it, until the rules change, head coach is going to have to be, he, he he's going to have to add um, a fundraiser to his yeah. 
to his to his tagline, right? You got to do it. That's the only way to get it done this day and age. Yes, for sure. That's that's a, that's a huge part of it. And it, and to be honest, Sam, from a large perspective, it's trickled all the way down to high school. Like you have to be involved with the outside entities if you want to be if you want to be good. If you want to get players right at the high school level, you need to be involved with the AAU programs, the grassroots programs, and in college, you need to and you need to make sure you're involved with the NIL collectives to make sure that you have the resources to go out and collect the get the best talent you can get. If you're not, you, you, you're not. Uh, you're not. I don't think you're. you You have a, as big a commitment to to winning and excellence as you think you do. Yeah, man. And I and look, full disclosure. Just like I said when I started talking about Dusty uh, a month ago, or however long ago it was, when we we were debating whether he, whether Juwan was going to get another year. I said if it's Juwan's not going to get another year, Dusty. I said at the time it's because I know Dusty. I not not just because, but that was a part of it. Like mm-hmm. I know I know the dude. I know what how he is, he's had success. I thought he'd be a really, really good fit. Also, full disclosure, man, it was, hey, man, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to lie. I wanted to see Juwan be, for, for more than, for, I wanted to see him get another opportunity so he could, so he could turn, I think the X's and O's weren't the issue. I wanted to see if he could get the other piece right if he can get the other piece right, could his X's and O's acumen translate to success? Because, hey, man, I will forever love Juwan Howard. I will forever love the Fab Five. It is my favorite team ever. Yeah. I mean, present company excluded. Present company excluded, right? But, yeah. I mean, just because as a kid, it's my favorite favorite childhood team. Let's just yeah. put it that way. The Fab Five well, that, is the reason why a lot of us went to Michigan. Yeah, <laughs> That's hey, come the on, man. Place to go. Yeah, so there there was some of that playing, but not to the point where I had blinders on to there were some issues. There were some serious issues that you couldn't you couldn't look past. You couldn't look beyond. You gotta get you gotta get some accountability player wise. You gotta figure out the how you get, you know, as far as your roster composition and portal approach. You gotta get that together because admissions aren't changing. Uh, you know, you gotta the NIL is a problem and you can put some blame on us, but what do you have to bring to the table for for NIL as well? Yeah. And then from a from a, a program standpoint, you were talking about the, the close games and, and all of that. How do we wrap all of these things into a scenario that allows us to move forward in a positive way? And there was just not enough of that to garner a, another opportunity. And so I, I get it. Uh, you didn't hear me saying all oh, this. He got done wrong. I, I, I get why the decision was made. As much as it pains me, and I'm sure it pained Ward uh, to make, I get it. And so now you press on, you press forward with with Dusty, and you look at the staff that he's putting together. Man, I'm impressed, Daniel. Yeah, I'm impressed. You go get Mike Boynton. Uh, you go get uh, uh, Akeem Miskadeen, and I wonder if that opens the door to John L. Davis. Now he was Akeem Miskadeen was the one who recruited John L. Davis to Florida Atlantic. And if you're talking about getting some some leadership and, you know, having a guy in your backcourt that you can rely on, man, that would be the one. Now, he's also looking at the NBA draft. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just don't know. Will, will he get a will he get a Marcus Sasser grade? I don't know that he get a Marcus Sasser grade. And Marcus Sasser was the end of the first round. So if you don't get that grade, you're back in college. And, man, what better place to go than the head coach you played for uh, these yeah. last few years? I think, first of all, speaking of if I'm John L. Davis, I'm going pro. Like, okay. there's, no, there's no there's no guarantee you go from Florida Atlantic to Michigan and have that same success. Okay. Totally different conference, totally different style of play. Just like that's one thing. Just because you're playing for your coach that 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 left FAU that that's came come, you both are going to a new territory and, and you're gonna have to reestablish yourself as a player. So if I'm him, I'm going. Even, even if you're not a first rounder. Yeah, even if he's not a first round, okay. you know, okay. because he's—I think for him, he's probably if he doesn't get a late a first round grade, he'll get it early. He'll get it. He's a really good player, but at the same time, it's a different atmosphere, different environment, different everything. So you're 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 really gambling. So if you're going to gamble with new everything, why not go to the next level and establish yourself as a pro, especially if you have those prospects. So that's 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 one. But for two, I think with. Dusty saying he's gonna spend 25 to 35 percent of his time like right on NIL. 
you have to go and get a, a strong staff, right? Yeah, that's yeah. going to recruit and and coach as well. Yeah. That's what you have in a guy with, with Mike Boy. He's a, been a head coach before, been a, a great defensive coach at Oklahoma State. He's shown me where he can recruit at a high level. Got Kay Cunningham to a place like Oklahoma State as the number one player in the country and the future number one overall draft pick. So you have a guy that is, okay, say Dusty has to handle something NIL-related or organizational, then you have a guy like Mike Boyden can step in and run practice and not miss. be similar to how Juwan had uh, had uh, Coach Martell. You know, you have a guy that's been a head coach and had success as a head coach. So now you kind of have somebody can step in and fill the gaps and fill the voids. If you have to step away – or just another guy to bounce ideas off of that's been in that seat before. Mm. So you have you 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 start with those two hires. You have a uh, Miska Dean from Georgia. He can help. He, he's uh, ball accounts from the people I've talked to, other coaches I've talked to at the D1 level and in the business. Strong recruiter, great guy, hard worker. So you bring in another guy, strong staff member like that. Man, you you kind of off to a, 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 a A plus start building your staff. Yeah, no doubt. I, I agree. It'll be interesting to see how he feels that last spot. I mentioned this on the on the air this morning. Um, I Dusty is not I'm I'm confident in saying is it, Dusty does not feel um like it's mandatory that you have a coach who has Michigan a Michigan background, whether that be university yeah. of or state of. Uh, and I only mention that because that's in my lifetime, which would be your lifetime too, that's what I'm That's never happened. There's never been a staff that didn't have a a Michigan guy on it, whether they were from the University of Michigan or from the state of Michigan. But you know that that is not that's not going to shape, or that does not seem to be shaping the the candidate pool yeah. for the re- for the remaining staff spot. Now you you have the great fortune of you got now two additional staff jobs uh on court staff jobs that they can't go on the court and on the road and recruit but they can actually coach so you know maybe you maybe you can fill in some in that way but this last staff member is not necessarily gonna be a guy who either coached at the university of michigan or is from the the state of michigan which it 20 years ago 10 years ago that's unheard of because the state was always it always churned out so much talent like yes. you had to have somebody that with some ties around here. Yeah. I just don't think that that's that Dusty is feeling. I, as a matter of fact, I know he's not feeling. That's why I tried to, you know, I, I wanted to get that point across to Michigan fans and to the people that watch this show. And we've had these discussions with you. I've had these discussions with you as well in 2024. So the mecca of grassroots basketball has been Dallas Fort Worth for the last since 2000, 2002, and it's spread across the South, right? And so with the migration of families moving from the Midwest back to the South, because we Sam, just out, you've been down there to to to, to watch the, 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 the recruiting events and the mm-hmm. uh, Elite 11, whatever it's Debbie you as well. You see the facilities, right? Mm-hmm. You see the the, 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 the dedication or, to, or commitment to excellence, as I call it, when it comes to athletics. So when you have this, it creates a it creates like a, a, a an entire region where, OK, you don't have to really leave from Texas to Florida. You really don't have to leave the region to, to, to build a good basketball team. And that's where Dusty has spent a lot of his time. Of course, he was at Eastern for a year or two, but he was at Louisiana Tech for six years. He was at Florida, then Florida Gulf Coast. I'm pretty sure he understands that I don't really have to – like you want to recruit the Midwest because like we spoke about last week, if you have guys from the state of Michigan that are – that they, they represent the program differently. Like they, they grew up in the state, they bleed blue, they that's, it's, it's ingrained in them. But when you have a, when you, like with, with Dusty being in the South for so long, he kind of understands like this is the hotbed for talent in this country. Like you can supplement Midwest, you can supplement West Coast, but I have to have guys that can get out here to Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, Memphis, uh, different parts of just different parts of the South. And if I want to build a good basketball team. And so he's, he's, I think he has a good understanding. Yeah, you got to allow the man to build the build his staff the way that he sees fit. Um, and talent isn't what it once was in this state. At the same time, I think there's always going to be a few guys, man. Like you got Trey. You got Trey McKinney over at Orchard Lake. You got Darius Acuff, who he saw last night when he went to see uh, Kanai Roos at IMG. And Darius Acuff is a uh, Detroit guy, Detroit Cast Tech. 
So it's always going to be a few. I just don't, man, I just don't want to automatically concede the relationship battle to Izzo every, every single time. That doesn't mean that you can't overcome it with time and familiarity um, as people get to know you. So that's why I say, you know, you, you let him do his thing, pick his guys, because ultimately, like you said, I mean, the reliance on your staff has never been greater. Mm-hmm. It's never been great. I mean, that, that makes or breaks coaches. I think it broke Tommy Amaker. I think the staff broke Tommy Amaker. We talked about it before. Yeah, I remember sitting down with T.A., man. <laughs> I remember sitting down with T.A. when he was here. I never told this story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so many stories. You go back. I don't want to make this a retrospective show. But, man, I mean, you, you think about some of the – he never replaced Billy Schmidt. You look at you look at Beeline when Beeline is on the precipice. Say, I got to change my staff. And I told this story this morning. I'll make this one quick. Just repeat it on dropping dimes because somebody just asked about uh, Laval Jordan. Mike Beebe said, "Is is Laval an option?" I think I, I think I think Laval. Uh, all the guys that have been a part of a winning culture at Michigan, I think all have valid cases. Whether it's Laval, Sadi, who's on staff right now, Luke Yaklich. Who uh, who went on to coach in Texas and is, was a head coach at UIC? I think all of these guys have legit credentials that they could bring to the table. But if if you talk about the unique aspects of building it in Michigan, I think they bring that perspective. And in Val's case, since the question was about Val, you know, being the kind of coach, uh, the the kind of supportive coach that could help coach a beeline, and that's not. An easy thing because Beeline had never been an assistant. Beeline never in his entire I don't know another coach I have ever seen who's never been an assistant in their life. John Beeline has never been an assistant coach. So right. it was it was obvious in his first run, in his first staff run, man, those dudes had very little input at all in what was going on. Right. But when that new staff came in, he started to delegate more. And the story that sticks out to me. Was a 2010 game, and it's vivid in my mind. They were playing Minnesota, Daniel. Now, Darius Morris was the point guard on the team. Darius Morris was a guy who he jump shot with this thing. He was trying to get the mid range game going, and he could obviously can get to the but they hadn't been running a whole lot of ball screen stuff uh, until around that point and after. Beeline gets him in, and he's like. Man, this mid range because he was the analytics guy before analytics were a thing. Mid range shots are not going to don't do that. Don't do that. Don't shoot these. Don't shoot these floaters. Don't do that. Just yeah. either drive all the way to the rim or kick it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how does Darius interpret that? Oh, right, you don't want me to shoot? Cool. I don't have to shoot. He went in that Minnesota game, man, and shot six six times. Like your primary ball handler. <laughs> what oh, he shot that. six times in the game. Like, okay, you don't want me to shoot? Bad. Right, so so coming out the game, it's like I remember watching like this is this, and and I know that Beeline was like furious, like this, it did what? (laughs) (laughs) How do you handle that? How do you handle a dude who the head coach clearly is not reaching? And I remember after that, like a couple games after that, I'm looking at the sideline. Beeline is on there, and it's like he taking notes on the sideline. And so I remember asking, asking, uh, maybe it was a few weeks later, like, man, what is what is Beeline writing when he's on the sideline? So Val had gotten to Beeline. And he was like, look, man, coach, he's not responding to you. You probably want you probably want to get rid of the dude right now, right? So here's what I want you to do, coach, because it's inevitable. He's gonna piss you off. Yeah, it's gonna happen. As sure as the day is long, he's going to do something to piss you off. So when the first time he does something to piss you off, Coach, I want you to let it go. I'm going to give you a, I'm gonna give you an index card, and I want you to check off a box. I'm going to put box on the car. I want you to check off the box when he piss you off. And then you know what else, Coach? He's going to piss you off again. I'm going to have another box right there for you to check it off. Don't say nothing. Don't react. Just check off the box. And, Coach, he's going to piss you off a third time. I got another box there for you to check off. And then you know what? When he pissed you out the fourth time, let him have it. You go yeah. full beeline, give it to him. Tell him everything you want to say, but give him those three mess-ups first. And once you give him those three mess-ups and you let it go, 
the fourth time, he's like, oh, man, coach giving me some leash. He giving me some leeway. He'll be able to. Now he's going to receive you more because he don't feel like you're attacking him all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, now the things that you tell now he's not saying coach don't want me to shoot. He'll say coach just don't want me to shoot that shot. And so it was one of those one of those revelatory things for me with that staff about how a staff works together, how a staff works with the head coach in a way that moves that coach off his mark. Right. And that was. That's when, whenever I think of Val as, as an assistant, I think of that story. And so that's the kind of guys that every coach needs. And so you asking me about, you asking me about a master. Yeah, I think, you know, I think all those guys would be good. But if you asking me about him specifically, yeah, I think he would be a, have a good role because, because of situations like that. And he's been a head coach since then too. So I don't know if that, if that would be in the equation here, but when I, when I say a coach, a coaching staff can make or break you, yeah. that coaching staff that John Beeline had was the difference. It turned the whole dynamic around and set the trajectory of John Beeline to be the best coach in Michigan basketball history and be the coach of the 2010s over Matt Painter, yeah. over Bo Ryan, over Tom Izzo. It was, and not just in making it to two championship games, he had more first round draft picks. All that John Beeline unquestionably to me was the coach of the 2010s in 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 uh in the Big Ten. And the big reason why, maybe the biggest reason why, was because he put a staff around him that complimented him in a way that that staff did. Yes, for sure. And I agree with everything you I, I agree with everything you just said going all, all the way back to Coach Amaker. Like this, your staff, man, and DG, I mean DG knows he he's been around football, he sees how the football team constantly builds strong, tries to build strong staffs, right? And that was the that was the conversation leading into this when Juwan was first let go. Hey, how do we, how committed are we going to be to building a strong staff, right? It started with Dusty, and now Dusty's gone and made some great hires. So I think moving forward, man, we should we all should be excited. Wow, hey man, they're saying they're they're saying it just came up in the chat. Is this legit? Is, did Jerome saying go to Arkansas? Ben, uh, producer Ben, producer Ben, I need you to check this out. Wow, that wow. would be that would be no, significant. No, that that whole thing from with Ironfield going to SMU, Musselman going to USC, and now Tang at Arkansas. Man, that's it's, it's 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 what they call it silly season right now. As far as these these coach, not not saying that they're making silly moves, but like just the the. The movement is gonna it's gonna be more movement, especially as the tournament comes to an end and more interviews are conducted. You don't be surprised if you see some other big name coaches moving too. Yeah. All right, man. Uh I just I wish as we move off this topic, get to talking Miami Iverson, we get to spring football. I wish Juwan well, man. I you know, I it it was uh it was sad. You know, I was it was sad to see it in the way that it did because it started with such promise. I think his X's and O's are that's the thing that Daniel that you I think really uh shone a light upon is that tactically, like his playbook, sometimes you wondered if it was too complex. <laughs> right. Sometimes you wonder, is he is he throwing too much at these dudes? He had the X's and O's just the, the, yes. roster, the, best yeah, the, the roster construction just wasn't wasn't ever conducive, especially with the preponderance of five star one and done types he was chasing. Yeah. You know, it just – it didn't all mesh. It didn't all meld the way that you wanted it to. So, I, I just hope – you know, if he goes to the NBA, I think Jawan Howard is going to be a, an outstanding coach in the NBA. Yeah, I, I think his, his style of coaching, his style of, like, the way he wants to – like, from what I've seen, just to build the locker room and the culture, like, it fits the NBA to a T. And I'm not saying he can't work in college. I think if he gets another college opportunity, he'll – learn from his mistakes and, and do really well. Like, I, Juwan is a, a really good person from, you know, the times I've met him and been around him. And that I think that's what bothered me most about the all the rhetoric that surrounded his tenure towards the last, the last year and a half, two years is, oh, his basketball acting, his basketball acting, he does his X and O, they don't run play, they don't do this. And I thought that was extremely unfair because if you watch and you pay attention and you know basketball, their X and O's was so yep. like you said, man, he'll he'll do well wherever he bounces back in. He'll always be family too. Like that, I don't, you know, that's that's a legend. 
All right, so I want to get to some spring football. Before we do, we got. I love the chat. I just want to. I just want to give a shout out to the chat. I love the chat. <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all don't miss y'all. My, y'all my people, especially oh, yeah. when talking about basketball. It's me and y'all. It's me and y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. Hey, hey, and hey, Daniel was completely right. That's how I used to be in the basketball <laughs> meetings. I don't care about none of this. I'm just here to stay in shape. Hey, for hey. Football season. Hey, I'm going to shoot a couple hey. threes, catch a couple oops. I ain't really trying to do all this, okay? Hey, Dad, Dad you're like, hey, man, this was me doing football season. What yep, you talking yep. about? Man? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, man. Hey, so, Ben, what I want you to do, grab the two-minute clip, the two-minute clip from, from my Ann Arbor, because it is time. We want to give people a glimpse of the my Ann Arbor episode that we just dropped. And and we'll get to it in this. The I people, love Ann Arbor. The people don't like that you cut our cut my cut my time. So what, what are you talking about? Cut what time? My time or uh, the beat down? They uh, want more uh, of that. They want to see him throw more so, football. So first, let me let me explain. Ben, first though, please drop that track. <laughs> it's coming. Destination Ann Arbor, your tour guides to all things Ann Arbor, your local tourism bureau. Uh, they partner with the Ann Arbor Sports Commission as well. Uh, they, when it comes to events that are coming to town, when it comes to places to stay, places to go, places to eat, all of these can be throughout Washtenaw County. Destination Ann Arbor is the name, but they service all of Washtenaw County. Destination Ann Arbor is your resource. You can find them at annarbor.org. And one of the things that they are trying to figure out how to get people, A, to realize the resource that they are, B, to discover more of these places that they want, you know, patrons or people, visitors to or residents to know about. So well, let's find some some tour guides, some actual tour guides to take people around. So the My Ann Arbor uh, series was born. We took the first uh, episode. We took Will Johnson to five of his favorite places in Washtenaw County. We went to Puffer Reds, uh, was the first stop. We stopped by the M-Den. He's a golfer, so we went over to a golf simulator and X-Golf. We went by the Slurping Turtle, and then our final stop was at another Perry Perico's uh, location, which was the Blue Leprechaun, where he had his toy drive with with Samaj Morgan. So it was a great episode. Episode two featured the Dropping Dimes crew, where Daniel flew up, Devin, we, you know, we went and picked the prince, uh, picked the Prince of Zamunda up and brought him to Ann Arbor as well. And we went on a tour around Ann Arbor on the Golden Limo bus. Now, before you see this clip, let me explain what Devin is talking about. One of our stops was the Folding Warehouse and the former high school All-American quarterback, right? The former two sport, two position standout at the University of Michigan. So cold on the football field. That he could also play receiver. This guy that was really in- nice. Hold on, time out. Can we spend some time? I know on you that? were nice. Tom, hold on. I had never caught a pass in a game in my life before I played <laughs> but receiver remember, at the highest on, level outside the NFL. I remember being at a hold on. I remember being at sound mind, sound body camp. Oh, I went crazy at that camp. Yeah, yeah, he went crazy. So he was killing it at quarterback and said, Okay. I'm so cold. I'm gonna go out here and play receiver. Dior Max. Ain't know what I was doing. <laughs> can, can, can you? And I got a picture of Dior kind of grabbing this. Dior was like like four three. And four three, DG and I ran right on past him. Ran past him, and he grabbing DG. So DG was cold. So I've given you Devin Gardner's football credentials. He is an elite athlete and was an elite quarterback. Don't you people think he should beat us at a football competition? Like this is what he should do. This is not something to brag about, Devin. Like, you're supposed to beat us. I use the analogy all the time. If a if a father was ruled to pay child, and the judge said, you got to pay child support. Is this dude somebody running around town talking about, I paid my child support? No. No, he did what he was supposed to do. Devin. If he paid it in crypto, he can. Hey Sam, hey Sam, if we had a three-point shooting contest, you think I would brag about winning? Yes, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he's supposed to. So anyway, 
We go to the folding warehouse and let me give DG. He beat the hell out of us. All right. Like he was supposed to. I think it was like five games to one. He really beat us. And so surely Devin wanted all five, all five victories on tape. I don't see why not. It's a half hour show right now. I, why not just I, make that the whole show? So listen, I try. We got to get all five spots in, Devin. <laughs> and so, so I, the initial submission to Destination Ann Arbor, the, the first cut was like an hour and 40 minutes. Like we can't turn an hour 40 minute episode. Yeah. So I cut it down to an hour, eight minutes. And Devin had had a lot of your victories in there. And they came back and said, this is just a, we, we, this is too long, fellas. We can't, have, we can't have a show this long. Oh, oh but you kept Sam. <laughs> You kept you kept you stealing my stilo and bivouac in there, I bet. So yeah. Let's hey man, can we show that clip? <laughs> Let's show the clip, man, from my Ann Arbor episode two. It is coming right now, and you can find this on the YouTube page. Just wrong. <laughs> I love it. Man, man. What's up? All right. Appreciate right. that, DG. Appreciate it. Hello. Hello. This one nice. <laughs> Man, I might, I might buy that jacket. Sam Webb. How you doing? This is AJ, the man. My man, this is my guy. Okay. Right I know you got your guys. I got my guys. Okay. How you doing? You good? So this is AJ, the man of the hour. Much more important than anything I have to say. So I'm going to let him tell everybody from Dropping Dimes all about my favorite place, Bivouac. All right. Well, welcome to the store. Uh, Bivouac was started in 1971 by my father. Uh, it started out as an army surplus store and just kind of evolved into what you see here. We have men's and women's outdoor clothing. We have men's and women's fashion clothing. Um, pretty much something. Anything you need. Anything you need. <laughs> yeah, of course. Our, our slogan is outfit your life. Yeah. Basically, whatever life brings, whether you need to go hike Everest or you're just going out for a nice dinner, you know, uh, at a restaurant, we got you covered. Yeah. Who? What? I got the reversible one. Oh, you got it on? Ah, oh, that's if you bite my style. That's what I. Oh, what? <laughs> Devin saw what I got and tried oh, to get the same my thing. Gosh. Tried to get the same thing. Terrible. I need to come shopping by myself next time. I got my deals. Sam got his deals. When I come in, Arbor, as you know, I come to Big Black. Boy. Love it. So, I mean, Devin, you got represented real well. I mean, we got you doing your your Marcus, what, what Marcus Darling. No, that's the Grinch. Picture. That's the Grinch. No, that's the Grinch. Remember, remember the Grinch couldn't find with the wear. He turned right to all right. I'm not going. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah, man. Bivouac oh, is look the at spot, this. man. Been going look there this. since I was look in college. Steve. Love it. Love you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Steve don't even – Steve just came to – I've never even seen Steve pop up in the chat. Look at that. Steve look at just got here. My man, Antoine. Just... Antoine. Love you, Steve, like that. Steve been here. Antoine need to have a, a guest box. We need to have a guest box so we can throw Antoine on there. See, Antoine, Antoine, Antoine I thought we was cool, but we're done. We are done, son. <laughs> we are done. It ain't block worthy just yet, but hey, we are done, hey, son. Hey, man. I <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. I be trying to tell Sam, fix your collar. I've never seen Sam put a coat on with his collar like it's supposed to be. Okay, so I had taken I my coat seen it. Off. That's See, the two straps. This is where your brother's supposed to pick you up. And so you let me, you let my collar be on the coat all messed up because you were mad because I had gotten, because oh. you didn't realize that. Man, Sam got this. And hey, I'm that gone. jacket was so cold. I was mad. I was mad that you stole my. Because first of all, I I don't even know why I'm even arguing with you. You saw me get that first and stole my stock. That's not true. That's not true. But folks, you can get it for yourself. 
Go over to Bivouac. Always great deals. This has been an Ann Arbor institution since, what, 1972? Yeah. AJ, like, AJ is one of the best guys, man. He just standing strong right there on State Street, man. And it, I, I remember when I first met him, I'm like, man, this is this is dope. Like, who knew that this place was here? Because, you know, you walk in on, on campus, you don't want to stop at a place called Bivouac. I, I don't – it was hard to read a little bit, you know. I went to Michigan. Yeah, man. Like, you know. Yeah, De Devin waited until the camera was off. He said, like, hey, man, your, your your coat collar is tucked in. Fix that. I was like, oh, okay. I see how we doing. Because I, I had taken off. This is how I know Devin was biting my style. I had taken the coat off. My, 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 you know. Your the, lamb. I was wearing, my lamb coat. I had taken that off <laughs> to try lamb. on the jacket that Devin bit and went to buy. And then when I took it off, said, I'm getting this. And I put my other coat back on. The collar was tucked in. I didn't even realize it. Devin was so mad. He's like, I'm going to let you look like that. I'm going to let you look like that for everybody to see because you got that coat before I did. So, anyway, that was <laughs> watch the full. There episode. is literally no legitimacy to that story. It's all fabricated and propaganda. You know now, hey, we went back the next day. I went back the next day with my wife and got the DG special discount the okay. next day. <laughs> the DG special <laughs> Folks. You can watch the full episode, episode two of My Ann Arbor with our friends from Destination Ann Arbor by going to our YouTube page. You can find all of the great events that are coming to Washtenaw County, where, and you can find all the great places to, to stay, to eat. Whether you're a resident here or you're visiting, your tour guide to all things Washtenaw County, you can find it at Destination Ann Arbor. Go to annarbor.org or just click uh, scan that QR code. And it'll take you to where you need to be, people. That's our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. Ben, would you please drop that track? Yes, sir. So it is time to talk some spring football. And DG, I know you made it by practice. Recently is, uh, you know, this this new offense is trying to find uh, a new rudder. You got a new quarterback, a bunch of new offensive linemen in the mix facing a defense that is returning a whole lot of weaponry. That is that is not a recipe for a whole lot of success, yeah. I might say. But, you know, iron sharper and iron, as they say, right? Yeah. And sometimes it's like iron and like paper clips, I guess. But I'm just telling you, this defense is is going to be special and so you know obviously the additions my favorite addition is the linebacker uh uh Sean barham barham oh my goodness because i had him as a freshman right i had maryland as a freshman like, man this guy can really play and then the step the steps that he's taken since then i remember having him last year and i'm like i'm talking to the coaches they're like yeah he was run hit everything run hit everything but this year he's taken a more of a a, a, a cerebral role as a leader and, and able to dissect defenses even better than he did before. And now he can play even faster, which was already pretty fast. And then when he gets on that edge and rush that passer, boy, I'm not saying he's Micah Parsons or anything like that, but that's the type of player that you're going to get. I think he's going to be a first rounder. And obviously everybody already knows about the first rounders that we have along the defensive line. And when you have guys like that on the defensive line and a backer like that, it, it sm I smell trouble. I smell trouble. I'm just saying there's going to be trouble. So, with that being said, obviously this offense is, is, has kind of an uphill battle as they prepare, and, and these quarterbacks get the opportunity to try to win the job. And so what I've seen from the quarterbacks is no separation, right, at the time. And, and it's hard to separate in spring ball just because the reps are so mixed up. You're throwing the guys that maybe you wouldn't be throwing to if you were the quarterback, um, and, and, and they're trying to give everybody an opportunity to compete to play. Um, the one thing that I will say, and, and I know everybody wants to know about Orgy. Firstly, he looks like, uh, like a G.I. Joe, like an action figure, but just has like a Michigan uniform on and, and obviously a bigger version. Like this dude is built like a a a rock. Um, and I'm just like, if I had that kind of if I look like that, I don't know if we'd be doing this show, Sam. I'm sorry. because <laughs> I'm talking about, man, he looks like like if you say, hey, what do I want an athlete to look like? That's exactly what it should look like. Right. And so the thing that for Orgy is he's got all the talent in the world, man. Right. And so you see some opportunities in practice where he missed some throws that, oh, man, you want to we want to have him make that throw. But then the one thing that's kind of separated him is he can do things that others can't. Right. So there are some throws that he did make 
that it's like, okay, there are no other guys that can make that throw. Does that mean he has to be the quarterback? Absolutely not, because consistency and, and a lot of other things come into play when you're when you're the quarterback of, the, of a team. But he does have some abilities that the others don't have. Obviously, we know his abilities as a runner, right? That's something that no one else can do. And then, like I said, there were a couple throws that I saw, and it's just like, wait a minute. Nobody else can do that on their best day, right? And so uh, he just has to clean up a lot, a, a few things like feet, right? And you know how much we talk about feet when we, when we do our quarterback breakdowns and how your feet are, are the basis for what you're going to be able to produce as a thrower. He has some things where he doesn't I, – I think he just doesn't know, right, where his feet aren't always in the right place. His feet aren't as clean as you want them to be. And so sometimes you lose accuracy. You lose – timing and different things like that and so those are those are i'm not gonna say easy fixes but there are things that i think that working with the staff he'll be able to fix in in due time and so the most talented guy alex orgy but as far as holistically quarterbacking i think it's a pretty even race and they're all kind of just battling it out yeah alex orgy's 235 pounds man that's a I'm, grown man and but they don't but it, i'm gonna just tell you he don't look 235 pounds right he looked like he slender just like everybody else but man oh man well, and, and that's why he can do things that others can't. Yeah. And it's, it's a PFW why, kid, by the way. Yeah, it's why you're gonna see, I think, the the you know, the progressions look a little different. I think it'll be one, two, and go do you <laughs> kind, of, kind of thing. While he works it works his way into it. And he he's made some some progress. He's made some some strides. Mm. Uh, but this is what spring practice is for, right? To continue. 100%. To continue to make some more strikes because, you know, just to get work in, what I heard is like, man, they, you know, you go ones against twos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Make sure these do get some work because yeah. if you facing off against Ken Grant, Mason Graham, Derek Moore, mm. you know, Josiah Stewart, and then now you Josiah throw Stewart, which I'm even more impressed by after seeing him up close because he is tiny, but he does not play that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll say, ain't no way that's him. I said, yeah. Ain't no way that's him. But he is a monster. He's I just not a small package. They said nobody's blocked him yet. And then when when Wink, when he goes in, because it was the practice not last Saturday, but I think the Saturday before that, like Sharon told him, I was like, hey, man, I want you to just give us everything. Throw the kitchen saying, man, they couldn't block him. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if he was, he was just trying to make a point to the office or what. But... Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, y'all not getting anything today because they couldn't yeah. block them. Can't block these dudes when you bring in all that pressure, too. Yeah. Uh, you, need, it, Sam, you know the, the thing that I found interesting, and, and, and I'm wondering how this is going to shake out. So, for right now, you're, you're doing, like, the base kind of offense, and this is not specifically geared to have the most success from Alex Orgy, right? And so, when you start to design the offense to fit his skill set, it's going to look a little different and he'll have much more success. Um, but my question would be, and, and it's something I've been kind of pondering. It's like, okay, obviously he's going to have a lot more run package as a quarterback and different things like that. And he looks like a sturdy guy, but we know what happens. The more you run, the more hits you take, right? You, you may get, you're, you're not as healthy or whatever the case may be. Right. And so you, Alex George is the quarterback. You have this entire offense built around him, but there's nobody behind him that can do the things he can do. Yeah. Right. And so how does that work where it's like, hey, how are we going to build like two, almost two separate schemes if, if in case something were to happen to Alex Orgy? I think that's a, a, a interesting thing because with me and Denard, it, I could do all the stuff he can do. I just could also do a few other things that yeah. we could, you know what I mean? And so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, I mean, oh, hold on, time on, oh, oh, oh. I couldn't do everything you could do. That was ridiculous. I took it way too far. <laughs> I couldn't do everything you could do, but I can make it look similar is what I was basically saying. I, I don't want to be disrespectful here. You know what I mean? I just yeah, have so to clear that up. I think it's a great point, uh, and I think it's, it's part of the challenge for Kirk Campbell. Mm -hmm. But I think what makes the challenge a little bit easier is they are putting in a new scheme for Alex Orgy, is, is just the emphasis within the scheme is different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so yeah, I asked point blank, uh, hey, you know, are you guys going to be doing anything, you know, bringing in some new plays that are specifically designed for us? And all the plays that we're going to run with him, I mean, obviously you tweak the playbook, but like we aren't bringing in a whole new run scheme, a whole new scheme just to fit Alex Orgy. The plays are there. We'll just call them more. 
Like you aren't going to call QB counter and QB power as much with J.J. McCarthy. He was 200 pounds, 205 pounds at the time, right? This dude is 235 pounds. <laughs> you, you're going to be more willing to dial up more of those plays, right? So I think you'll you'll see more of that with, with Alex Orgy. And if it wound up being a, a guy that, let's say something happened and Alex Orgy was not in for the, it's Denegal or Tuttle or whoever, Mm -hmm. And yeah, just be calling a calling different plays from the from the playbook. So, but the the challenge is how do you find that that mix and that mesh? So you know all the the, the way the the flow of the offense, how productive you are, doesn't change dramatically from quarterback to quarterback based on your change in, in emphasis within the playbook. I mean that's that's a work in progress, man. We'll we'll see. Well, all I know is the defense is out. They they are so cold. Jay Sean it's gonna, it's gonna give the offense some grace so they can develop. Yeah, yeah. You you mentioned Jay Sean Barham being a first round pick, and you are not the first person to say that. I don't think it's a I don't think it's a question. And obviously, you know, I'm the guy that is pretty first guessy. You know, I, I first yeah. guess things when I know a guy's gonna be a first round pick, i.e. JJ McCarthy three years ago. But you don't gotta listen to me, but you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey man, I got into a debate on the board about. Devin would tell you to this day that if they had gone with J.J. McCarthy as a freshman, they, they would have gone. Maybe they don't win that championship that year, but they went back-to-back -back national championships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I can't. Now, I will also say, while I think your point is valid and good, I get why they, in that moment, coaching for their jobs. And that's why you're second. That's why you're second to me because you only you got on second. So whatever. You can be second. Hey, second. Let me ask you a question. Ain't, ain't, ain't no wrong with silver. Ain't no wrong with my, silver. My position is the same. I ain't like, no wrong with silver. From hey, BG, they gonna be ready for Texas. That's all I need them to. I just need them to be ready for right, Texas. Let's, 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 no, we can't, them, hold on, hold on. Come on, see, pump our brakes, man. Can we get a fall camp let's, first? Let's, Dang. Let's pause for a second. See, here's man. what DG does. Dang. He'll bring up points that I don't even make. And argue against the points that I didn't make. That's not true. Which, which is true. what he just did. That's, not true. That's what he just did. I never said you all I'm saying, Sam, is you were hesitant at the beginning. You're I hesitant. was not hesitant. I was look, my position now. Hey, we got we got listen, time out, time out. We got oh some Monday morning quarterback fans in here. At the beginning of it all, when I stood on that table, Sam only put a little bit of a toe. No, he no. ain't get all up on the table with no. me. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Hey, just tell me if we're going to beat Texas, DG. That's all I need to know from you, man. Daniel, Daniel, I love you, brother. Don't let this dude do this right here. Don't let him filibuster like this. <laughs> the drop it. No, this, this I need him to first, I need him right first now. get some good some Now, good now let's, let's be clear. Let's be 100% clear. From the moment J.J. McCarthy stepped on that campus, I said, this man is so immensely talented. He is the most talented quarterback that we have seen at the University of Michigan and, since DG. Right, I was very, very clear. That I he can confirm. Way more, way more talented than the quarterback he's backing up. There's no question about that. We were talking. We saw from his first, for his first snap where he gets out, throws a touchdown across his body, and shook the dude up so much that he mad in practice because they talk about the quarter. They they talk about the touchdown that JJ threw. He knew, he could see, and I could see. But here, this was my point. It wasn't about JJ having more talent. Or even JJ being being the the guy who could be the most ready to take them to the promised land, but you got to remember the circumstance, which is still my position to this day. There is no way that Jim Harbaugh, Josh Gaddis, that coaching staff. I'm not tiptoeing. I'm not, no 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 no. I'm not tiptoeing. There's no way they were going to go with the freshman. I, I get There's that. No way they were going to go with the freshman. I get that, Sam. All I'm saying is you wasn't 10 toes on work. the table with me. You wasn't 10 toes. I give you three. Ten toes and on and one of them was a pinky. One, one of them was a pinky. Listen. I give you three toes on the table with me, and one was a pinky. Hold on. Jim, you got to think about it from his perspective. The man almost lost his job. Right now, if if Jim had, let's say they were coming off, let's say they were coming off an eight and four season. Or or scratch that. What were they? Two and four in the COVID year? Let's mm. say they were four and two the year before. Now I think he goes with JJ. But because they were two and four and he almost lost his job, he's like, hey man, I I might think the young guy is 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 has the most up. I know the young guy has the most upside, but this this safe dude is gonna be safe. 
He's the yeah. safest pick for us. And safe right. almost got safe should have won them, made them undefeated during the regular season. If the if the ref doesn't take that touchdown off the field oh, yeah. against Michigan State. But to your point, DG, and where I was riding with you then, and I was riding with you now, that was K, that was the best game of K McNamara's career. He threw for 383 yards. Uh -huh. And what did you say that I agree with? But you said, Sam, there are way more. That it should have been way more than that. Should have been way that. The next week, somebody threw for 500. <laughs> the next week, Aiden O'Connell threw for 528 dude, yards. Sam, that, that, that year, I nailed it, dude. I said, <laughs> okay, this is great. But I'm telling you, this defense can be had. This yeah. defense that they played was awful. He should have threw for 700. And then Aiden O'Connell lit him up. A, yeah, a former walk-on, by the way. Yeah, he did. He, he lit him up. I was there with you in, in the Wisconsin game where we watched the All-22, and it was like three touchdowns left on the field Ooh. in the first half. And, and that's a low number, three. Low. So I'm three. like, so, hey. And don't, guess what, Sam? I want to say we didn't even put all that on there. We, we talked about that privately. We didn't, we didn't even so, put that on the internet. So, so, so does that sound like I'm tiptoeing, Daniel? A little bit. Does that sound like I, or does that sound like I'm ten toes down Sam. with my guy's point? But Four understanding toes. the dynamics of the coaching. I get it. Four they toes. said. They was like, man, we we got to play. And here's the irony. I think the holdout for J.J., I've, I've never said this before. I think the holdout was like, man, from the jump saying we go with J.J. was old Matt Weiss. Like, he was the one riding hard saying. Oh, he was big time. Hey, let's, let's, just go, let's just go with him. And the other was hey, like, Sam. Do, he had just got there. The other was like, hey, man, we hey we almost got fired. <laughs> Hell no. We going with the. We go with the guy who's gonna be safe out here. Sam, I think that we should enough. give everybody in the chat that may be Monday morning quarterback fans a chance to speak up and say, Hey, I was one of those people that was trying to say you were wrong, and I'm sorry. I think they should. I wonder if they have the courage. <laughs> Apologize to me because y'all were attacking me. Y'all were attacking me. I can't believe he'd say that. What do you mean? We need K, blah, 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 blah. He doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> JJ's turnover prone. He's just going to throw it to the other team too much. That's what I imagine they sound like. He's going to throw it to the other team too much. Uh, hey, man, he was not. You was wrong. He and was, was not wrong. a turnover guy in high school either. He wasn't at all. I don't know where yeah. he came from. But. Yeah, I think I think he just, like you would say, you know, when you're in practice, sometimes you might test the limits a little bit. And I think he was a test the limits in practice guy. You got to. That's what practice you know? is for. Yeah, I hear you. I it's hear just you. not smart to do it as a freshman. You know, See, so, we don't know so, what you're going to do in a real game. So my people in the chat, does this sound like I'm disagreeing with Devin? This doesn't sound I, like I'm I never said you disagree. I just said you was only six toes down. Oh, no, that's, 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 that's not true either. And you, you said was, he was you first. Was five and a big toe. That's no, five and a pinky. Five and a pinky. See, I'm just saying I understood where the coach's mindset was when they made that decision. Like, hey, Antoine Johnson, no. The, the majority of the people that were on these chats, on this, they were big time K. He's a winner. We need him. He's similar to Tom Brady. Let's not do this again. Uh -uh, Antoine not. Johnson, we ain't going to forget about that. I, I, you know I ain't going to forget. You know I ain't going to forget. They was all over. Oh, this is the same. We, we can't do this. I know this other guy's talented, but this is our guy. Yeah, all right. I ain't never not. Look, I never heard anybody say Tom Brady. I've, I've heard people say this. Oh my God. And, and they were in what chat? I, you didn't no, I'm a, I, we'll talk later. <laughs> Somebody was smoking. Somebody was high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, sti from. the stickiest. I predicted the national championship three years ago, four years ago. So yeah, no, nah, we we're I seeing right now. JJ's about to be what a top three pick, maybe? The mm. top five at work. Hey, hey, Steve Horn said I'm about to get an excessive celebration, but you dog all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this dude, hey. I let you say that's right. You were you were right. About it. Look, we all two we straps and six that. toes. That's what he is. Two oh. straps and six toes down. One of them is pink. Anyway, can we get some, <laughs> can we get some more practice observations? What did you what did you think of the secondary? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, I got a chance to you know have an embrace with with Rob Moore. You know, I never even met him before, but he's oh, my wow. favorite player since as a fresh freshman and. I, I saw him, man, and I didn't even say nothing. I just gave him a hug, man. I just, I, I was devastated, man. He's he's on the crutch. He hadn't had his surgery yet. He said it's too much swelling right now for them to do it. But man, yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. But I think that they're they've got guys that are going to step up and perform well. I think that this roster is a lot better than what people think, just because you know the recruiting thing. Everybody sees like, oh, we don't get all these top recruits. 
they develop players at the University of Michigan. That's been proven time and time again. And not to mention they bring in guys who are going to be difference makers like Barham. Um, so defense intact. Offensive line, same deal where they're shuffling and trying to figure things out. And it's so hard to see when you're going to – like I watched Killen Grant, Ken of Grant just grab a dude and just sling him out the way. And then he grabbed a running back and sling him too. And he's about to get in trouble because it was whiz tempo, which means just run by the dude. But he's just such a monster that he's getting it done, man. I talked to him for a little bit. He's a nice guy too, man. I didn't know he was a nice guy. He's just so nice. He's like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, uh, that's your voice? <laughs> that's weird. He's like, <laughs> like, I, I thought he would sound more like, yeah, man, what's up? Like something like that just because he's such a monster. You know what I mean? But hey, uh, Mace, Mace is the same way. Mace's voice uh, is the same way. Yeah, and, and the, the receiving court, as much as – it's not it's not that super like, oh, we got this dude. We know we got Jamar Chase and, and Je Jamar uh, Je Jefferson on side. It, it's not that. But I really like more. And we've talked about how much I like more and his ability. And, and he's a do everything guy. And then, you know, I got to I hate to do it. So Miles Morgan look like 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 he always look, man. I, he, he wow. He wow. I don't want to give him this, but the boy can play, man. Uh, <laughs> hands look better than ever. Uh, catching the ball, fingertips. Not, not. I mean, no question on if the ball is going to be caught. It's like a Venus flytrap. Outstanding job there. And it was another kid, but I can't remember his name. He's wearing number three, and I don't, I don't remember. He didn't, he didn't contribute last year for sure. But he, I, he didn't get a whole bunch of balls thrown to him. He had a few opportunities, but his route running. And I, I gotta, I want to look up and see who this guy is. But his route running. I'm talking about when he gets to the top of that route and snap that thing down with great speed, it's, it's pretty superb, right? And so you got those three guys and that yeah, I was super is impressed a, with. Is it a, what is it, a stutter and go touchdown? No, so I saw that, but no, this was just, I'm talking about just running curl. So I'm a route guy. I'm not a, oh, of course, you, if you run stutter and go, of course you should win, right? Okay. I want to see you run curl, stuff that actually happens in a football game. You get a stutter and go once every blue moon. Uh, he was running routes, man, digs, so all out. same guy is what I'm asking. Was it the same guy? I do not. I, I, I he, he wore number three. He wore number three. Uh, was his last name Moore? Maybe okay. That's Fred Moore. Yeah, Fred Moore had Fred Moore. Time. Fred Moore had so Fred time. Moore. Fred yeah. Moore is nice, man. Fred Moore. I'm not saying he's I'm not saying I'm not saying he's this, but watching him feels like Jerry Judy of just like speed to breaks, right? Yeah. Speed to breaks. I'm talking about Alabama yeah. Jerry Judy, speed to breaks. Like, how are you running so fast and stopping so fast? Yeah. It was super impressive, and so. Uh, the quarterbacks have guys to throw to for sure. Yeah, he hit he hit DJ Waller with that, <laughs> and he was going. <laughs> and, and, and why, Sam? Why, Sam? Because he had run these curls all day, right? And mm. so he's stopping so fast, and he's having these easy catches, he's wide open, and so it's not. It's like, all right, man, I'm not gonna keep giving you these. Up, oh, see you. Mm. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Go. Yeah, he's a good player, man. I, so what is he new? I I, I don't. No, no, no. He's he's, he's he was. This is he's just finally year. coming into his own, getting opportunity. This is the second year. He was he got some some run last year. Yeah, but not as much as Samaj. Not as much yeah. as Samaj, but nothing significant. Let's not be yeah. ridiculous. Okay? But he he. This is he, <laughs> he what are we doing? Speed. What is Sam doing? He didn't play. He ain't play for real. It's cool. <laughs> this is his opportunity, and that's how it works when you're a freshman. You get a little crumb here or there. Nobody really knows you. Even me, I don't know you, and I don't watch all the film. And then I see a – oh, who is that? Don't even remember your name. And then you go make a name for yourself. That's just how it works. It's no disrespect, yep. none of that. Yep. And what I saw at that football practice, didn't see a whole bunch of catches. He was open, and, and he creates separation, and that's what receivers need to do. Yeah, outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. Um, we'll have some more practice details over on the MichiganInsider.com. We went over five guys who are looking good five reserves who are stepping up i put jay sean barham on that list because he new to the because he's new to the you got to talk about him you got yeah you got to talk all right so i wanted to just put him on a list even though he's not a, a reserve but he is new to michigan but a guy that i put on that list that you need to watch for is uh, zeke berry zeke berry is a guy who, who is stepping up this spring yeah so one one other thing on barham so i walk in you know the linebackers doing a little pre-practice stuff and i'm i'm with dinar and a, and a recruit right a kid and he's, he looks over and he says, wait, what position is this? Because Barham looks like another a different human than all the rest of the humans that are, like, in the group, right? And so he, like, confused of, like, what position is this? What is this? I don't know what position this is. I'm telling him, man, he looked different, man. It, it was cool to see. It was, it was so cool because he's a young guy and he just 
he was just it's just his natural observation not knowing much he's from new orleans and and it was it was pretty funny yeah so listen folks We'll give you more practice reports uh, coming up over at MichiganInsider.com. Be sure to check out the full episode of My Ann Arbor on the YouTube page. Uh, you can see it, it shows Devin winning. Like he, he just, it's like he cares about the magnitude of the victory. Hit him I, with that. <laughs> so, right. We're going we'll to slide by Chrysler next time. We'll figure hey. something out. Some basketball related hey. kind of uh, hey. excursion. We can go we'll David Buster. Out. Right. So we'll make that happen for sure. Uh, we have more inside Michigan recruiting interviews coming. I did the one with Jordan Davison last week. We're going to have more this week as visitors come to campus. So be on the lookout for that and much, much more. Again, check out all things Ann Arbor and Washtenaw County with our friends at Destination Ann Arbor. You can find them at annarbor.org. And don't forget, when you are traveling around Southeast Michigan, you need the airport transport, you're landing somewhere abroad or somewhere across the country and you need a car service to pick you up, there too, our friends at Golden Limo have you covered. There is no service like Golden Limo. They are second to none, and they were responsible for getting us around uh, on our My Ann Arbor tour. And certainly, they have uh, connected with a lot of student athletes. They've connect. They were connected with uh, with Will Johnson. He's an ambassador for Destination Arbor. They they drove not just Michigan football around. They drove Oakland basketball around. So I was looking up, it's like, yeah, that, those Golden Limo buses? Yeah, Golden Limo buses gro drove the Oakland basketball team, Michigan Athletics. I saw them shouting out Michigan hockey. So certainly Michigan rides on Golden. We ride on Golden, and you should too. You can find them at goldenlimo.com. Be sure to check them out. Until next time, folks, appreciate your time. Hanging with us on Steady Dropping Dimes. We'll see you next week. This was fun. See you on Wednesday, guys. <laughs>